For some years we've been interested in a molecule called um, MER-TK and um, this is a good example of how um, we work by serendipity um, in basic research. Many years ago I was working at the Salk Institute and was in particular interested in um, the biology of a cell called the oligodendrocyte, um, which some of you will have heard about, um, which is the principal cell within the nervous system responsible for producing myelin. And at that time, we were very interested in understanding what made that cell tick and how we might be able to optimize the ability of that cell to stay alive um, when confronted with an immune insult. And at that time, we identified a number of receptors on the surface of the oligodendrocyte cell, which we immediately recognized might be important in keeping that cell alive. And so for a number of years we were interested in trying to determine whether activation of that receptor might have some use ultimately in novel treatments for people um, with multiple sclerosis. Now interestingly out of our genetic research we also identified that one of these receptors um, in this family of receptors known as MER-TK was also a susceptibility gene for multiple sclerosis. So this immediately sparked our interest because on the one hand it was saying that we already knew that MER-TK was important to the neurobiology of MS and here were the genetic studies saying that MER-TK was also important in terms of the causality of MS. So this prompted us um, very much to focus on the genetics of MER-TK and also trying to understand um, the variability of expression of MER-TK in people and how that was influenced by um, genetic predisposition. And this subsequently is proving to be a really interesting and important um, area of research, not just relevant to MER-TK in isolation, but relevant to both multiple sclerosis in general and also extending to how we um, interrogate and investigate complex human disease. There have been two basic camps um, in terms of how um, to think about the genetics of, of complex human disease. Most of the output of what we call genome-wide association studies, which interrogate the whole genome and looking for um, genes which might be associated with disease. Um, most of the output has identified what we call common human variation. That is, the genes which are commonly present in the whole population but which might be a little bit more pre prevalent in people with disease. Now, this has underpinned a whole field of research suggesting that minor modulation in expression of the proteins produced by those genes might be relevant um, to the course of disease and we and others are pursuing that course of action. But in addition there's a second uh, approach and that is um, the idea that these areas or these common variations are really sentinels for more deep or, um, or opportunity, sentinels to provide opportunity um, to more deeply interrogate these sites, these loci. And underpinning um, the risk is actually um, what we call rarer variants, whereby there might be mutations in the actual proteins which actually um, alter um, not just expression but the structure of the proteins. And this is the sense of direction which we've taken with respect to MER-TK and we've identified underpinning the MER-TK um, gene some rare variations which appear to be important for a subpopulation of people with multiple sclerosis and where that variation is much more penetrant. That is, if you have it, you're much more likely to develop um, the disease. So this is starting to tell us that in fact um, multiple sclerosis might not just be one 
a general disease, it may be a syndrome in which different subgroups of people have different drivers of the disease, in particular different genetic drivers of the disease, and we need to understand this um, much more deeply um, to be able to, in, at the end of the day, give each of those subgroups appropriate advice about both prognosis and ultimately therapies which are more likely to assist them as opposed to other people with multiple sclerosis. So um, we're very, very keen to pursue um, this work with MER-TK. In other words, to identify the degree to which MER-TK is driving the susceptibility um, to the disease in this subgroup of people. And if that is actually clarified and confirmed, as we believe it will, it will then provide a very potent preamble to actually targeting specific therapies to those people to modulate uh, MER-TK and the influence that MER-TK has upon the oligodendrocyte. So this is the dawn of a new age as far as I'm concerned for both MS and other complex human diseases whereby we're entering the phase of what we call precision and personalised medicine not thinking about large groups of people in isolation but thinking about subgroups of people and how their particular disease is generated and how best to modify the disease for the better for them.